know how to get our GIS P applications. And I think about the concept of day and night, right? It's really quick, it's really fast, it's a lot of information dumped in your heads, and yeah, you have to be quick to digest too. And because I will not make anything easier for you, I will get our next presenter coming here, Melvin Barnes. He's the GIS manager with Seminole County, and he's going to share his experience today with us about keeping the lines of communication open. Melvin, you got this stuff. The concept. Five minutes. It's your talk. As you said, my name is Melvin Barnes. I'm the GIS manager for Seminole County, and unbeknownst to our hostess, I'm actually going to change the name of my presentation. It's not that I don't think communication isn't important, I do, but as I was reviewing my slides, it became obvious to me that it wasn't so much about open dialogue as it was about understanding that we don't have to figure this GIS thing out on our own. Hence, the new name of my presentation is No Need to Do It On Your Own. With the, yeah, it's supposed to change. <laughs> with the advancements in our industry, there's a lot to do and there's a lot to learn. I know, I don't know, that threw me off a little bit, but we start over. With the advancements in our industry, there's a lot to do and there's a lot to learn, but there's some good news. Keep losing it. <laughs> there's some good news, though. More than likely, in your area, there are organizations that have dealt or are dealing with the same issues that you have. What I would encourage you to do, instead of trying to resolve everything on your own, I would say reach out to those groups and take advantage of their learning experience. You're going to find that it's faster, cheaper, and God knows it's a lot less stressful. In fact, one of the best things about working in GIS in the Central Florida area is the high level of cooperation among the different entities. I know I reached out to many of you. And each time, and without hesitation, you guys have given me the assistance that I need, whether it be with data or knowledge. And that's, that's important because GIS has changed drastically in the last 15 years, even more so in the last two or three. There was a time when one person essentially had many jobs. She had data maintenance, data creation, map creation, programming. Some of you guys are probably still doing those things. Um, now we have a lot more of them. We got web services, we got APIs, cloud computing, and we got to learn all of this on reduced staff, reduced budget, and right now we have some additional pressure. We have Bing, Google. These companies have made mapping mainstream, and they have created the expectations from our peers and the citizens to have data and mapping tools readily available. And they want them fast, they want them accurate, and they want them easy to use. All this change, this expectation of technology, it may change for Seminole County. And believe it or not, one of our biggest obstacles to that change was the fact that we had a mature GIS enterprise. We had central license, we had central library, we had central GIS. The question became, what is the best way to move forward? And that is when we realized there's no need to do this on your own. The team said, hey, why don't we reach out to these different counties and see how they're handling these issues? One of those issues being RSVE. The county's original GIS library sat on a file server that had shape files, file geodatabases, coverages. How do you move that over? Now, some of you might say that's simple, just import an RSVE and get done. Wasn't quite that straightforward. We learned that we we're going to need an SDE administrator. Data custodians realized that they were going to lose some control of their data, and not everybody liked that. Shape files, coverages, geodatabases. What's, what's happening with all this stuff? Is it really even necessary to move all of that? data over to RSV, we ended up with a lot of questions, and that is why we reached out to the different counties. We reached out to Lake, we reached out to Orange, we reached out to Putnam. And we found by doing this, we were able to find solutions to our problems that frankly had been driving us up the wall. I'll go back to that GIS library example. Our users, they like the folder structure. When they go to access data, they like that organization. They don't like RSV. They don't like scrolling through 150 to 200 layers just to find the information that they need. When we visited Orange County, asked, how are you dealing with this? He's going, well, that's simple. They're just using layer files that point to RSVE. He said, that creates a win-win for everybody. Their users get to keep their folder structure. You are ensured that they're using STE, and you only manage one library. Step back and went, wow, that'll work. Went back, we bounced that off of the GIS Advisory Committee, and now that's when Thing that we're moving forward with. That's also just one example of how we took advantage of another organization's learning experience. Um, we also, as we visit these other counties, we validated a lot of other information, one of those being direction. 
So for those of you who are building a, a GIS, who are expanding your GIS, or just struggling with issues, I would just remind you there's no need to do it on your own. With that said, I, the slide was supposed to be turning, and that's pretty much all I have, so I'm going to turn it back over to you, Claudia. Okay. <laughs>